This is Little Rock, Arkansas, 1957, when Negro students encountered violence in their attempt to register at a previously all-white school. Traditionally in the South, schools had been segregated. So it is not surprising that there was opposition when the Supreme Court ordered schools to integrate. But violence could not be tolerated. President Eisenhower ordered in federal troops to support the rights of the Negro student. To the eyes of the world, the fact of violence tended to obscure the true meaning of Little Rock. Its importance was that it demonstrated to those who opposed integration that they would ultimately have to give way. Negroes' rights would be upheld by the federal government. Eventually, these students were admitted, educated, and graduated. Today in Little Rock, this school is peacefully integrated. Year by year, integration of schools has proceeded but there have been some holdouts. One of these was the University of Mississippi. In 1962, the Little Rock story was repeated there, when President Kennedy sent in federal troops to ensure James Meredith's right to enroll and to pursue his studies. At this point, this is our fault, to believe that white society and the systems we live in would educate black children the same as theirs. Not only did black people risk their freedom and their lives to force integration into white society. They also fought for the right to have their children sit side by side with white students. Today, 75% of the schools have resegregated, but now they're under the authority of the public school system. And this is the negative result. We're one of the few countries in the world that systematically and deliberately spends less money to educate poor children than affluent children. It's not true that education is equal in this country because there's still very intense segregation happening in all kinds of forms all over this country. And so what I loved about her film and what she did is I think it spoke to my film 13th in a way and that we're trying to deconstruct uh, the truths that are supposed to be evident are actually falsehoods, are actually kind of veils pulled over an ugliness that America hasn't dealt with. Teach Us All explores hyper-segregated schools around the country where at least 75% of students are of the same race. Millions and millions of black and Latino kids will go through a public education system that does not educate them. The film says children living in poverty continue to suffer. The mold, the carpet, the walls itself, the classrooms, the teachers, everything that you need in the school or could use in the school is not there. At this point, it's just like a daycare for teenagers. Students at Block High School in rural Louisiana say conditions at their school are so bad that they're struggling to get an education. And what you see right here, if you look closely, it got some, um, the water that's been leaking, that's turning the mold, like when you go in the classrooms, you can smell it. That building there, B building, it is completely unsafe, but we still do go in there as far as using the auditorium. These are the textbooks they were given at the beginning of the school year. In reading the report by the U.S. Green Building Council, it found that the United States would need to spend an additional $46 billion annually on school building construction and maintenance in order to ensure safe and healthy facilities for students. Two-thirds of schools were found to harbor unhealthy environmental conditions like peeling paint, crumbling plaster, non-functioning toilets, poor lighting, inadequate ventilation, and decrepit heating and cooling systems. Airborne contaminants like asbestos, radon, formaldehyde can be found in old schools and have a disproportionate effect on younger children. Public education in rural areas gets little national attention. We traveled to Catahoula Parish, Louisiana, one of the poorest parishes, one of the poorest states in the country, to see why students are speaking out and what conditions in Deep South schools are like more than six decades after desegregation. We got teachers that are not certified teaching subjects that they don't even know. If you're a teacher and you don't know what you're doing, how you expect me to do? Block High School is situated in Jonesville, the poorest section of Catahoula Parish. Nearly 70% of seniors are black, and about 60% of students here do not go on to college after graduation. 
But 13 miles away, there's another school in the same school district that looks a lot different. Nearly 90% of the senior class here is white. They perform better academically and enroll in college at a higher rate. So we just tried to film inside Harrisonburg High School, but the superintendent won't let our cameras inside. They don't want the principals to talk to us on camera. But there's a clear, notable difference in how the school looks compared to Block High School. Dr. Gilly Freeman is in charge of all schools in the district, including Block and Harrisonburg High School. When we talk to students and we talk to families at Block High School, they compare it to Harrisonburg. They say Harrisonburg has beautiful facilities. Why do you think they're saying there's such a difference? Several of the other schools, the communities with past bond issues, specifically around facility renovation and refurbishment, and in the recent years, Johnsville hasn't passed any such issue to address their schools. Freeman says that the state of Louisiana gives a set amount of money to school districts, but individual towns can raise additional money by issuing a bond or a tax. What this has allowed them to do um, is to create inside a single school district high schools that are really inequitable in terms of their funding when it comes to facility maintenance in a way that creates schools that are economically segregated and racially segregated. This is their 2018-2019 budget. Jonesville has three schools that they're funding. This is the amount of revenue that's brought in for just Jonesville schools. Upkeep for the building and the grounds come out to be about $22,000. You have to divide that by three schools. Is that enough money? No, it's, it's for Block not. High School to get fixed? No, not compared to the other schools. But you come to Harrisonburg, one school, they get a total of $20,000. $20,000, whereas Block High School is getting like $7,000. Yes. What's going to happen is it's going to come down to a matter of integrity uh, and accountability. Are they going to be a board and district of their word and start to do what we need them to do for the best interest of our children and whether or not they're going to hold the necessary people accountable? One potential solution that people talk about to fix the schools here is just to consolidate all the schools in the district. But we just got off the phone with a school board member who says that parents at Harrisonburg High School don't want their kids going to the same school as Block students because of their, quote, moral character. I have some friends that go to Harrisonburg School, but they've talked about us and came back and my friends are no longer friends with them because of the comments and things that they've said. What kind of comments? Um, racial comments. The students there have said things about? Students and teachers. Like what kind of things? Like I'm not coming down to teach those animals or, you know, stuff like that. Shakold wants to go to college but she says she's not ready. Honestly, I don't know what I'm gonna do after high school. I might go to college and I might go into the Army because I don't think I'm mentally prepared for college as far as the education that I've lacked so far. And I just don't wanna really go through that struggle. So you don't, you don't feel like this school has prepared you for college? No, sir. You don't feel like you've gotten the education you, you need? No, sir. Who do you think should be held accountable for this? Honestly, I think they all should be held accountable because it starts at the top. It takes us children to protest, to have people like you come down and talk to us. It's been going on far too long and you are a little too late. Most of the schools are over 50 years old and funds allocated to poor schools are little to none. Because of the need to integrate into white society, Black people relinquish the responsibility, care, and control of many areas of our community. And educating our children was the most important and the biggest failure. We have to be of the mindset that we can become successful on our own. We have everything we need within us to be great. Black people are the most beautiful, the most talented, the most creative, the most entertaining, we run faster, jump higher, and we're the most resilient. But while we're asking, pleading, and begging white society to give us the minimum for our children, they've been providing the maximum for their children without a second thought to ours. The vision for our schools is very attainable. 
once we band together to make it happen. Private learning centers that foster creativity, futuristic technological advancements, math, science, languages, anything and everything they need to open up the world to them can be at their fingertips. And it's time. <laughs>